Hey everybody, uh, so last week I filmed a video uh, that covered using HTTP in an Angular application. Uh, we looked at an Ionic example where we pulled in some data from Reddit. And so basically that's what we use this service that we're looking at now for. Uh, we had a method to grab some data from a JSON file that's stored locally using an HTTP GET request. And we also did the same thing, but we used a remote URL. So we grabbed some data from an API and we just used the uh, standard Reddit API to do that. So if you're not sure how to get up to this point, I'll link to that tutorial so you can go through that. Uh, but in this tutorial, we're going to look at using a map and filter. As you can see, I've already set up down here in this pipe method. We're going to use those to uh, modify the data that we're getting back from Reddit to be a little bit more useful. You'll see that sometimes the data you get back from an API or wherever you're getting that data from, uh, it'll be just useful uh, in its default format. You might have exactly the data you need returned, uh, but sometimes you'll get a whole bunch of extra stuff you don't need or the stuff you do need might be buried within objects and arrays and things like that. So uh, we're going to just do a quick little example of how you can use a map and a filter to get the data that you actually want. So before we do get started with the code, let's just jump into the browser and I've got the sort of old data, the default data that was getting returned. I've got that in this little before mapping console log statement here. And if we expand that out, you can kind of see what I mean about the data not being that useful in its default format. So the way Reddit, the Reddit API works is the response we get back is we have this, what kind of data it is, and then we have the data in this big chunk. Uh, if we take a look at that, there's some more properties in here with stuff you know, we probably don't need. And then inside of that, we have children. And these are the actual Reddit posts that we're interested in. And then inside of those, we have more data with more information about the specific posts. So as a sort of first step, what we would want to do is rather than just returning this entire object with all this information, we want to drill down just a couple steps here and return this uh, children array. And this is the perfect uh, use case for using a map with observables. And so what an observable allows us to do is we can add this pipe operator onto the observable that's being returned. So as I mentioned in the last lesson, if we make this call here, this.http.get, and then we supply whatever URL we want to get the data from, this is going to return us uh, an observable. And once again, if you're not familiar with observables, I'll, I'll link to a, a separate tutorial for that. Uh, but what we can do with that observable, rather than just subscribing to it straight away, which we're doing from the home page here, we call that method, we subscribe to the observable it returns, and then we just log out the data. Uh, what we can do before that is we can instead modify that observable and return a different observable. And we can do that by supplying this pipe method here, and then we supply any uh, operators that we want to use on that observable uh, inside of this pipe. And so each operator we use is going to modify that observable and return a new observable. And so you can see here we have the map and filter uh, operators that we're using. So to use those, we need to first import them. And what the map operator does is basically it will take the data in whatever form it is, and then it allows us to return uh, something different. So we have a function that's applied to the data that's being returned, and then we return basically whatever we want instead. So you could, for example, use this map operator here, and it takes in the data that the observables are emitting. And the reason we've given it an any type here is just that obviously the Reddit data has a very specific format it's using, and we don't have types defined for that. So if we don't say any, it's going to complain about me trying to access different properties. And I think this might actually be more clear if we rename that to uh, res in place of response. So we'll log that out and we'll change that to res.data.children. So basically what this does is we have the data being passed into map, the response is being passed into this map, and then we get to return whatever we want. Uh, and that's going to be the value that gets logged out here. When we subscribe to that observable, it's going to be the mapped response that we're returning instead of the original response. So I could, for example, just return uh, one. So let's say rather than what we'll get to in a moment, we'll just say return one. Actually, now let's say return hello. 
So if I save this now and we go back into the browser, you can see that we have this before uh, mapping console log statement is still there and that's just the data as it always was. Uh, but you can see for this, um, since we're returning hello there, and then we're subscribing to that here and logging it out. As you'll see on this line here, it says we're logging out hello from home.page.ts, which is this line here. So instead of returning the data from Reddit, we're just returning hello. Now, obviously that's a bit pointless because you know, why would we wanna make a call to an API just to return hello? But what we can do, which is more useful, is instead, rather than returning the entire data object that was returned from Reddit, we can just return the specific bit we were interested in. So that's what I'm doing here. So instead of just returning the response directly, we're returning uh, the response dot data dot children. And if you look at the data that Reddit returns here, we have the response here, and then we have data, and then we have children, and that's the array that we want to return. So by doing that, now let me just save that again. Uh, if we take a look in the browser, you see we have the before mapping, again, same old object, uh, but after, we do the mapping, we just have the array of just the Reddit posts. And this is going to be much easier to work with uh, than something like this, where we're going to have to, wherever we're using it, we're going to need to drill down every time into that children property. So a map is probably uh, one of the more useful methods we can use uh, as it allows us to return you know, specifically what we want. Uh, but there are other methods available, way more than the ones we're covering here. But another one I did want to cover is filter. Uh, because I think it can be a little bit confusing as to what exactly it does. So from this point, we might say, okay, so we've got our Reddit posts in a nice format here, but perhaps we also don't want all of the posts. Maybe we only want a certain type of post, say uh, ones that are original content. I think there's a property in here somewhere for that. Yeah, here. So it says, is it original content? Uh, false. So maybe we just want to filter out the ones. Maybe our application is a a Reddit client for displaying only original content or something like that. And so it might seem natural then to be like, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll add a filter onto that and only display the things that are original content. And so the way a filter generally uh, works is it will go over each thing that is supplied in the data. And if we return true, it will uh, allow that through. If we return false, it won't allow it through. So you might do something like, and again, I'll change that to res. You might want to do something like return res dot um, so that would be dot dot data dot is original content uh, say we we'll say equals equals true but uh, that will just be true anyway so you don't really need to make that comparison there but uh, just for the sake of giving you an example, uh, what we'd want this to do then is, well, if it is original content, it's allowed through. If it uh, isn't, then it's not. So with the filter, we aren't uh, filtering each one of these things individually. We are filtering this uh, response as a whole now. So I could, for example, maybe filter it based on length or something like that. There's nothing really useful here to filter. Uh, but let's say if uh, res dot uh, length uh, is uh, less than 10, we will return it. So res.length less than 10, that'll be true if res.length is less than 10. So if we save that and take a look, so we have nothing returning now uh, because well, there's 10, uh, 10 posts in the response there so that this filter condition is failing so it's not returning it. Uh, if we say uh, equals 10, you can see that we do get the response now because there's 10 uh, this has a length of 10 and this filter condition is passing so the observable response is let through. So the filter operator in, a, in an observable is a good way to filter out specific uh, data emissions from an observable, especially in a scenario where perhaps you've got an observable that's emitting more data over time, but it's not a good way to filter out uh, individual things, say within the array that we want to work with here. And that's where something just like a standard filter would be more useful, a standard array filter. And so these same sort of methods exist natively on arrays. These are methods of arrays. And so you can map and filter arrays normally. And again, if you're not familiar with uh, mapping and filtering arrays, I'll link to another tutorial for that. 
But what we could do here, for example, is this uh, response that we're mapping out here, this is an array. So I could filter this uh, inside of the map function. So because I don't want to filter the observable, the response from the observable, I just want to filter this data specifically. So just to get reorientated again after that little detour, let's just uh, check what we get here. So again, we have our original response and then with our mapped response, we've pulled out the children property there. And now we want to filter this out for only original content. So what we're doing here is we just call children.filter. And again, this has nothing to do with observables. Now we are just using the normal filter method on an array. So we don't even need this anymore, for example. And to use a filter method, we just supply that with a, a function, a filter function. And so we'll say, uh, we'll call that post. And so each of the posts will get passed into this function. And then we can run a test on each one to determine whether or not it should be allowed into uh, the array. So if I just said return true, that would allow everything through. If I said return false, it would not let anything through. So let's uh, do what we said originally, which was check for original content. So we could do that by checking. Um, so we post data dot is original content. So now if that is original content, it should uh, allow it through. If it's not original content, it won't. So let's look at the response we get now. And you can see here it's an empty array, which means none of those 10 posts had that original content flag set to true. And now if we just uh, reverse that, we'll say, well, we only want to return the stuff that's not original content. We'll save that. And this time we should get everything coming through. And as you can see there, we do. Uh, let's see if we can filter on something I know, a little bit more interesting. Um, not really sure what I can use that's going to be different. Um, why not this specific user then? We'll say we only want posts from Governator88. Uh, I assume they are only going to be responsible for that one post in this 10. Uh, but let's do that. So we'll say uh, return post.data.author. And that was, I already copied that. So now uh, we're filtering out for only posts by Governator88. And if we go back to the browser now, we can see we do just have that one, uh, one post now. So this is gonna be really useful in a circumstance where, and obviously this is a bit of a silly example to you know, search out just that one person's post, but maybe there is something specific you want to filter on. Uh, there is a, a not safe for work filter, for example. So maybe you only want work friendly content to appear and so you can do all of that here. You can first map out the actual posts we're interested in. Then you can filter out the ones you do or you don't want. And then when you subscribe to your simple method here in the service, you just call that get remote data, subscribe to it. And then you have the data in the exact format, uh, format you want rather than in you know, your homepage or somewhere else, uh, rather than every time having to drill into that and you know, go through the various properties and filter out things. Uh, when you're using it, it's just all prepared for you, which makes it a lot easier to work with. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully it was able to demonstrate how to work with the data you're getting back from APIs or wherever you're getting the data from in a more sort of maintainable and friendly way. Uh, if you did like this tutorial, please do feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.